why might neither of them yeah. be contenders? Yeah, I mean, typically, so Goldman Sachs is two co-presidents, right? And you think co-presidents, those are the shoe-ins to be the next CEO. Um, well, our reporting is a, a little different. It's counterintuitive. So you look at um, both of these gentlemen. So there's Gordon Smith, who's 59 years old, and he leads uh, the biggest business. He leads the retail bank, essentially, right? Branches, mortgages, lending, everything involved. And then you have an Argentinian named uh, Daniel Pinto, and he's about 55. And he leads the Wall Street operations, trading, IB, that type of thing. So, uh, you know, these guys are the folks who are going to jump in. If something happens to Jamie, if he gets mm. arrested, hit by a bus, whatever, right, in the next five years, these are the guys who, can, who are ready to take over today. Uh, and I think that's very important. However, given their age, if you look at, um, you know, Gordon Smith at 59, he's not that much younger than uh, Jamie Dimon himself. And so he's almost at retirement age in about five years. So that would kind of disqualify him. Now, um, well, he doesn't have to retire, right? Plenty of other bank CEOs don't retire. You don't have to retire. And he kept pushing back the five years. You never know when it's You don't starts. have to retire. Well, Jamie, that's the other thing we should talk about today, which is I've covered Jamie Dimon for the last four years. Every time we asked him, Jamie Dimon, succession planning, when are you going to retire? When, when are the, uh, the young bucks underneath you going to be get, going to have a, a shot at the helm? He said five more years. And he's been saying that for the last four years or so. <laughs> I think this time he means it because he's talked to the board. And they all agree that five years from, from today is when the, when the clock starts. So if it's not these two men, then who yeah. are the other likely candidates? Right. So I think it's even more likely that, you know, it's, it comes down to two women named Mary, essentially. Oh. You have Marianne Lake, who's the CFO, and you have Mary Callahan Erdos, who's in charge of asset management. Uh, there's also one other person called Doug Petno, and he's, uh, he leads a commercial bank. But let's focus on, 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 Mar on the two Marys for now. Yeah, tell us which one might be more likely and, 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 and their, yeah. their the path to this spot that they're in. Okay, so Mary Erdos, uh, she's in charge of asset management and wealth management, right? That accounts for about 12% of the company, mm -hmm. not a huge part. So for her to have a viable shot uh, in the next half decade, you would have to see her basically be assigned to a bigger business, whether it's you know retail bank or on the Wall Street side. And if you see them broadening out her, her skill set, then you have to really think, okay, she's got a real shot at it. 